I'm going to start here at the very beginning with my telescope in the box and the mount not yet set up. The reason I'm doing this is so that you can have a general idea of the heft and size of this telescope. The point being that if you are not a big enough or strong enough person to put this together by yourself and require someone else to help you do it, you probably should not get a telescope of this weight and this size. So I'm going to zoom out and wander over there and put the mount together. Now as you can see, I've got some bungee cords here to help keep the mount from flopping around. So what I'm going to do first is put out all the legs. Now I'm a tall guy and I like the legs out all the way. If you are a shorter person, you will have to figure out what is the best size of legs for your height and weight. And if you're setting up for kids, obviously at a public star party, you might want to put it lower than you might otherwise for yourself as an adult. Now you can see the telescope sits on its legs and then I'm going to undo the bungee cords, put them over on my nice little table, which fell off, and just spread this out. Now if you can't lift this, you shouldn't get If you can't lift this, you shouldn't get one of these things. I'm going to pull the camera back a little bit. There. That looks better. So the next thing to do is put the telescope on it. And there's this thing coming out of here. Now this is just an alt azimuth mount, so it needs to be perfectly level, as level as you can get it. And when I open my box, and this box is not the original equipment box. I bought this box at Walmart for $19. It just happened to be, by good luck, <clears throat> a perfect fit for this telescope. So here I have this little bag of all the accessories that go on this telescope and we'll put them off to the side for now. Here's the equipment manual. So I'm going to take out the telescope and it's kind of heavy as well. I have to walk over here. Hope you can still see me. There's two handles here and I'm just going to pull this out. Again, if you can't do this, you don't need to buy this telescope because you can't count on having somebody else available like your boyfriend or your husband or somebody to do it for you. If you can't do it yourself, get a smaller telescope. <laughs> so I've hefted this thing up here. And now we're going to take this screw and screw it in just like that until it sets. And it's already started to catch. So here we go. I'm almost there. You want this to be stable and sturdy, but not too tight. Just tight enough. And the legs need to be sort of adjusted so that they will fit in these little prongs. Okay, there's that. So now the next thing to do is set up the telescope. I'm going to walk back over here and re-aim the camera a little bit higher. There. Now in my bag, I have a bunch of stuff.
the first thing I have is the finder scope. So it just slips on like this. Well, maybe more like that. How's that? And you just secure it with these screws. We're not going to worry about aiming the finder scope, but ideally the crosshairs in the finder scope will match exactly the star that you see in the telescope. Now let's see what else we've got here. This is a right angle finder. I mean a right angle, it's a right angle. So that goes in here. This little set screw tightens it. And then right here in the top is where the eyepieces go. So one eyepiece came with this telescope, which I use quite often because it's really a pretty good eyepiece. And this is a Mead Supal Plus, I hope that focuses, 26 millimeter multi-coated eyepiece. That just goes right in here, like that. This little doojiggy is kind of optional, but if you want to use it, it just sits on here like this and tightens up. And this will hold the hand controller when it's uh, not in use. Sometimes I just set it on the top here. So here's the hand controller. This is called a Mead Audio Star. This is not the hand controller that came with this equipment, but I bought a replacement when my other one failed after more than 10 years, and I thought I was dead duck, but this telescope is basically a giant paperweight without this hand controller. And fortunately, me makes this thing called an Audio Star, which is compatible with my LX90. In case I had not mentioned, the LX90 is a Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. It's a catadioptric system that we talked about earlier in the video and it's an 8-inch mirror and an F10 optical system. I'm going to see if I can zoom in here on this area here of the telescope, which is the little control pad right there. And you can see I just plugged this thing in here into the thing that says HBX. This is basically an old-fashioned telephone jack. And so that's this. We'll get to this in a minute. Now the next thing to do is put power to the telescope. You can run this telescope. I'm going to put the zoom back out now. You can power this telescope with eight D battery cells and they go in these little compartments here. I never do that. I prefer, they tend to, they tend to have a, a long, a short life lifespan, maybe one night of viewing. If you're using them on the second night and forget to bring some along and your batteries go out, you're dead. <clears throat> and buying batteries every so often gets to be expensive. So what I did is I bought this, which is a Radio Shack Obviously, Radio Shack doesn't exist anymore, but you can get these things at Fry's and other kinds of places. And that plugs in here into this little thing called 12 volt input. And this is a AC adapter, uh, anywhere from three to 12 volt output. And it just dawned on me that I forgot to bring an extension cord. So I'm gonna shut this video off, go get my, extension cord and I'll be back in just a minute.